Welcome, everybody, to the Enough to Keep Going podcast. This is episode number 237, the new format show for April 14th, 2022. I'm your host, Tom Master 99 With me tonight, just one other uh, co-host for tonight. Unfortunately, DBQ could not make it, but we do have the tech guru, Mr. Game Logic. Game, how's it going? He's doing his technical stuff. So. <laughs> good, 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 man. How are you? <laughs> good, good. I'm doing good. So we're going to start off the show as usual with our new releases. Uh, no stories today on, on the new releases, but I have a, quite a few games here that we've been playing. I'm going to start off first with MLB The Show 22. Uh, I think you I think DB or talked about it a little bit last week, maybe, if I remember correctly. Uh, I actually played it uh, two different ways. Uh, actually, a few different ways. Uh, the first two, I, I played it on the X Cloud, so I played it through X Cloud, and then I obviously just played it on my Xbox by itself. Um, but I also played it uh, through X Cloud, not only on the X, my different Xboxes, but also through my phone, which was actually kind of a good experience. So, kind of nice to have that um, kind of in a portable. Uh, when I'm kind of just sitting on the couch, you know, if somebody's watching something, I could just sit there and, and you know. Play play through a few games or so, or do like the moments that you can do, or uh, like the daily or the weekly challenges that they have. So it's kind of nice. Um, uh, and then, like I said, I played through X Cloud through that, and then I also played it initially on the X Cloud through my uh, Xbox One, and then the Xbox Series X. Uh, excuse me, Xbox One X and Xbox Series X, and then I eventually actually just installed it on my uh, my Xbox One X. Uh, only because I have I actually have room on there, the Xbox Series X, since it uses, you know, the it's part of the XS series. You know, you get the the better bump in quality and stuff. So I just didn't have room for it. So I was just playing it through the cloud, uh, through that uh, on my Series X, which I mean, it played fine. I didn't. I think. I think only that first day I tried to play it, it kind of kind of messed up a couple times. Like it kind of froze uh, a couple times, and then. There was a few times where it kind of like a lag while it froze. Well, the two times it lag or froze, I had to like just like quit out of it and, and start back up the game. Uh, and I think the one time, the first time I actually had to quit out of X, uh, the Game Pass because I was playing through Game Pass on the on my Xbox. Or I'm sorry, on my phone. Uh, and then um, the other times it was just kind of a hard lock and, or a freeze. And then it kind of just started after like 15, 20 seconds. So, I mean, that was the first night. Uh, and then after that, I haven't had haven't, haven't seen any problems since then. So it's it's been pretty smooth uh, on all the systems, uh, X Cloud or otherwise, are installed. So <clears throat> I'm having fun with it, though. It's I mean, it's, I don't really see any difference <laughs> from 21. So I mean, it's pretty much you know the same thing. Uh, you get your season or the um, the road to the show, I believe it's called, where you kind of start out in the miners. You know, you can make a character, and like I said, they have challenges and different kind of uh, what they call moments, like they kind of pick us. Um, a play or something that happened in history and you kind of kind of play through that and give you kind of like a kind of a challenge too. like you got to hit make a hit or you got to get two doubles or you got to you know make a home run or something like that so it's it's kind of kind of interesting and it's, then those ones are usually pretty quick you know you get three outs and then you know you're out of it uh, you can restart it if you want but uh so you can play it as many times as you want and i think they do that like every week or so uh, they change it or no i'm sorry it goes monthly so they throw some challenges there monthly and then i think maybe even every week they might kind of change it out a little bit too so it's kind of nice but i've been doing that and along with the uh the weekly challenges uh when those pop up or even those man i don't know how some of those guys do it because they they get like super high scores in there i'm like i i can't <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know i just not a baseball guy i guess but I'm lucky if I can get, you know, it goes by scores, basically, and it kind of multiplies as, you know, you get a hit or something, uh, you know, if you get like a grounder or just like something down the line, you know, it's, it's they'll give you maybe like a one or two uh, multiplier, but then if you actually get a hit or home run, you know, it kind of jumps up, you know, a few, a few uh, multipliers, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think the most I've gotten ever, even from last year's uh, show, was um, maybe in the 20,000 point range, like, and there's people like, you know, four or five hundred thousand. It's like I, I, I don't even understand like how you can even go up that far. And then, and you get like I said, you get the three outs, and then you can restart, or you know, you just go out of it. So I usually I just do it a couple times, depending on what it is, and I just kind of keep going. So, uh, but other than that, uh, just going through the show part, uh, road to the show. Uh, I actually seem to be doing pretty 
pretty well on this one this time. Um, I'm kind of doing like a hybrid, uh, just batting and then like a relief pitcher kind of a thing. I think last time I started off that and then I just went to pure, just hitting. Uh, and then I think like right field or something. So I'm kind of trading off between that. And I'm still doing right field again when I'm just doing the, the batting stuff. So, uh, but no, I seem to be, I don't know, I guess I got that ball vision a little bit better, I guess, or something. Cause it's, it's, I'm getting a lot more hits and, uh, of course, you know, I'm still starting out in rookie. I don't think I even got to the majors, uh, or even triple a, uh, back on 21. So, I mean, there was a time there where I just kind of quit cause I was, <laughs> I was doing terrible. So hopefully that doesn't happen this time around too, but we'll see as, you know, I kind of have that dynamic, dynamic, um, was it the dynamic difficulty setting on? So I kind of like, you know, as I getting better and stuff it kind of ramps up the difficulty so we'll see if how much that that jumps up you know as i'm playing this one but, but yeah i'm having a lot of fun like i said um x cloud is nice it's it's you know i can just sit, like i said i can sit there on the phone and do it so it's it's really cool that i can uh play it that, that way and then uh I'll, there's another couple of games i'll be talking about um that i played on x cloud too in, in a little bit but uh other than that uh game logic any questions or i don't know if you've tried it out or if you're a baseball guy, or at least a baseball game guy, video game guy. Uh, I usually I am, but uh, since I gave up my consoles, I have not played it because I don't think it's on PC. I think it's uh, only Xbox and PlayStation. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I and I guess Nintendo have. Switch this season. Yeah, I was gonna switch. I forgot. Yeah, I kind of. I would have thought you could be able to stream it through PC, but I guess you can't. Yeah, because I think I tried that too at one point, uh, and I couldn't do it. So, but that's right. All right. Game logic. Well, b- before yeah. we go to that, I, I did oh, want to ask you. So you said that um, y- y- you didn't see a lot of differences, but you're playing it on, and I'm sorry, I had technical admin stuff to do while you were talking. <laughs> um, but did you say you had played it on on X- on your Xbox One X? Yeah, One oh. X and Series X. Okay, so even on Series X, you still didn't see really that much of a difference from last year? No, not not really. Um, I did have it installed at first, and then I had to uninstall it because I was I had to install another one, and then I could just play it through the cloud through the cloud. Excuse me, on the Series X. But when I had it installed, I really I didn't see any like major differences. I'm sure like if you had them like side by side, you could probably see it. But I mean, just just kind of there. I just it wasn't a huge difference in my eyes, at least my old eyes. So <laughs> keep, <laughs> keep that in the account. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, even the game modes and stuff too. I mean, like I said, it seems all pretty much the same. So, I mean, I don't know how much different you could do really in, in a baseball game. So, um, that's it. Well, usually, I mean, when I uh, when I played it, you know, both when I was on PlayStation and on Xbox, I mean, the, the the incremental progression from year to year was, you know, the controls would be a little tighter, and sometimes they would introduce, you know, slightly different control modes, um, and you would see some graphical improvement. I mean. During yeah. the you know that generation, you know the the PlayStation Four Pro got introduced, and you know the Scorpio, and so those versions that crossed over, you know the introduction of those consoles. I mean, well, I'm sorry. So the Xbox introduction obviously didn't really matter because it was only on PlayStation. But you know, you would see you know graphical updates. So it's uh, I would have expected to see a, a a little difference, but depending on you know wh- where you're playing and whatnot, it, it may not may not jump out at you. Yeah, it could be could too, because I, I mean, I played the original one, or uh, 21 at least, I should say, on the Xbox Series X too. So, I mean, kind of, you know, I mean, maybe next year's, if they have it again on next year, and it'll be, you know, it'll, you'll see that graphical jump. But like, like I said, I didn't really notice anything. Maybe DB can talk about it a little bit more about it uh, next week if he's on. Assuming he's on, he should be on. But um, yeah, not, nothing much for me. Yeah, I was hoping for, I was hoping for a, a... A slightly noticeable jump, at least. I mean, I, I know, I know that they deployed on Series X l- last year, but you would think that being their first year and the first opportunity of them getting their hands on that hardware, that they would have learned, you know, some additional techniques yeah. or something. How are load times from between, you know, last year and this year? Ah, uh, it seems fine. It seems about the same. Yeah, I mean, even on Nextcloud, it wasn't anything like exuberant or anything like that, so it was fine. About the same. But I mean, I mean, not. Um, but I mean, in comparison, yeah, coming across the SSD. I mean, did you play on your Series X? Did you play? I mean, where was it installed when you had it installed? Was it installed on your local, or have you added an expansion 
drive yet? No, I, yeah, I just have the internal one, the internal uh, drive. So, yeah, I mean, I had it on there initially, and, yeah, it was pretty quick. So, I mean, just like pretty much every game when you have it on the SSD. But um, I'm trying to think on the X, because I played it more. I, I mean, honestly, I've played it more on uh, xCloud than anything. But when I was playing on my Xbox One X, um, I, I don't think the, the load times are horrible. I mean, I mean, yeah, they're longer than, obviously, the, the Series X. Um, but and even through the cloud, it's actually pretty quick. So, uh, but it wasn't it wasn't like super terrible or anything on on the uh, the Xbox One X. So pretty good. I, I always I used to always judge by whether or not uh, I had an opportunity to take a sip of coffee in between a level <laughs> load. If I if I was like rushing to get my uh, coffee cup down because the thing loaded up r- right lo- while I was in mid drink, then I was like, oh, okay, it is really going fast. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely other games that I'll be talking about here that. I I do see the difference in load times, but yeah, the show was seemed to be fine. wasn't anything extra long. Okay, gotcha, man. Cool. All right, and you are playing Tina Tina's Wonderlands. Or... Yeah, so I was playing a little bit more. So I played a little more of that last week after I talked to DBQ about it. Um, you know, got a little bit further down the road in terms of, you know, starting to see the game open up. So I, I think I fought my second boss. So I may have been through about three bosses now. Um, and, you know, had hit the point where, um, you know, you, you get out in, onto kind of the open world map, which works a little different than it did in Borderlands. So in Borderlands, you were kind of on the open world map kind of all the time. Um, and you were able to see, you know, kind of the entirety of a given, you know, level that you had warped onto and where the different things were. This one has kind of a, uh, it's, you know, I'm not a super huge fan of the animation, which is uh, a little, um, I can't tell if it's meant to be a little more Nintendo kind of looking or if it's more a matter of, you know, you're supposed to be kind of playing this, uh, role-playing game with Tina, where Tina's the dungeon master, and so if it's supposed to kind of look like mini, like, you know, you're a little miniature kind of being moved around the map, but, you know, you get some some freedom to kind of go where you want to go, but it's not it's not Elden Ring level free, freedom, it's not Sid Meier's Pirates level freedom, it's, you know, I definitely still feel like I'm kind of being funneled in a certain direction, um, and so you kind of go around the map, and uh, you you eventually get the ability to, like, kick obstructions and things that are there. So you have to, like, knock bottle caps over to kind of walk across land features and water features and, you know, kick, uh, kick logs that are down blocking your way, and then that opens up parts of the map. Um, so, I mean, that's fine. It gives a little break from kind of the first-person shooter action, I guess. Um, I, I don't know that really needed it i mean it's a it's a decent palette change you know between this and borderlands i mean because because the reality is is the, the game's fun but i mean in reality at least so far the way it's playing out it's it's borderlands 3.5 so um but there are things that i like with, uh, you know that i think i mentioned last week as well you know i do the, the guns seem a little more varied in terms of the capabilities that they have um the progression tree uh i'm i'm you know more into um because it kind of it kind of mixes some elements that are a little more a little less grounded i think than the skill tree was in kind of the borderland series where they kind of felt like they i don't know if realistic is the right answer but it, it those skill trees seemed a little less towards the fantastical or at least grounded in like what the specific type of um you know three archetype characters there were three or four archetype characters that they were where these feel a little wider um so you know so you get some freedom you get to explore the map i've, I've kind of gone into what seems to be like the, i guess there are periodic kind of dungeons so there are different kind of encounter set pieces it's, it's like i said it's a little more interrupted than the straight stick open world map was uh in the Borderlands games. So you you go and you interact with characters on the map, and again, you kind of do it in this large bobblehead, you know, animation, um, kind of strategic overview of the map. Uh, and then you, as you enter a town, uh, it drops from that, you know, top-down kind of strategic view into the standard first-person shooter kind of Borderlands view. Um, and then you, then you fight your fight, and then you get a bunch of re- rewards, and then you go back to kind of this bobblehead map. Uh, and then there are kind of sort of dungeons along the way as well. So there are, 
you know, interior areas that are a little tighter and offer a little less maneuvering room, um, which creates a slightly different tactical problem. Um, you know, but as I mentioned to DBQ last year, last week, you know, there's there's still the problem of it's it's just overlooted, um, if I can say that, if that's a word. Um, and I, like I said, I, I mentioned last week that I think I saw where the devs had kind of deliberately done that. But you know, it's I usually I usually talk frequently about there being an inventory meta that I get into. This meta is very much a sift and filter meta, so you're just getting so much loot that you kind of have to gain new kind of um, techniques and uh, and establish kind of parameters in your head to more quickly kind of triage all of the different equipment that's constantly being dropped on the ground and figure out the ones that you're just going to bypass and move on. Um, but uh, but it's a great graphical feast. You know, I, I would not have expected... I mean, I didn't expect this with the last... with Borderlands 3 either. I, I don't expect a Borderlands game to be the thing that makes me go out and get a new GPU, you know, for a PC. Um, but uh, Tiny Tina's got some things that apparently going on that are a little more, um, you know, deeply ingrained than I would expect from, like, that presentation layer. Um, but uh, I, I was also having some problems with the Radeon graphics cards and, and the latest driver round that came out on certain systems. So, uh, but... Uh, you know, I played that actually on this system, which I just upgraded last week to an RTX 3060. And, you know, I'm back to getting, and I'm, I'm playing at 1080p, but I'm back to getting, you know, between 100 and 140 frames uh, per second, you know, as I'm, uh, as I'm playing that, which is acceptable, you know, even for a, even for a 1080p. Um, there was some wonkiness going on with this monitor. This monitor is actually a 240 hertz monitor, but for some reason, every once in a while it it wigs out in its integration with Windows, and I can't set it to 240. Um, so I, uh, so I've been setting it lower and kind of creeping it up by creating custom resolutions in the NVIDIA control panel, which is I basically never use. <laughs> but uh, but this game is making me go in that direction. I, I've had to use that a couple times just because like the Windows standard display configurator wasn't you know, doing what I needed, and that may have been on this monitor too, so I think I think every once in a while I get a Windows update where, you know, a lot of this monitor's functionality uh, and its integration with Windows isn't great, but so fortunately the NVIDIA control panel is a is a decent, decent workaround for that, but uh, but I'm having a lot of fun still in Tiny Tina, you know, it's not it's not super groundbreaking, it's um not as impactful as kind of that first time in Borderlands was, or even Borderlands 2, you know, for that matter. Um, but it's still a welcome romp. I, I'm a little curious as to why they didn't just do Borderlands 4, and I don't know whether that was because of a dev, a dev cycle thing or them, you know, trying to retool the studio after, you know, coming, going into the pandemic and coming back out, or if this was a thing that they did while they were in the pandemic because they didn't have, you know, the the face-to-face one-on-one collaboration that they would have needed to do to do a full scale borderlands but you know it's a decent aside and it'll it'll keep some people you know satisfied for a quick chunk of 15 hours or so if somebody needs kind of that that borderlands hit um it was probably probably i will say it was probably a smarter move than doing say a borderlands 3 like dlc or expansion pack okay yeah i was gonna ask you if you thought maybe it was gonna be that maybe or if it was just this was always its own game, you know. Yeah, to get it's 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 definitely kind of. I mean, yes, it's its own game, but I mean, it's 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 right on the edge. I mean, it's barely in my mind, like over the threshold of what I would call its own game. I could definitely still view it kind of as an expandable, you know, kind of like uh, Lost Legacy was for Uncharted Four, and like Miles Morales was for Spider Man. So, which is fine, yeah. um, but. Uh, you know, it is what it is. They they've sold it. However, they sold sold it sold it. However, they sold it. Um, so uh, it's 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 nothing that's that really grates me as far as the amount of content that's in it, or you know, kind of kind of kind of what it's doing from a from a gameplay for perspective. So you mentioned the the graphics. Is it still that like cel shaded look, or is it? it they try to make it look different. No, it, it's it's definitely still that cel shaded look. I am I. It, I, I'm tempted to say it's the same engine as Borderlands Three, but even if it is, I mean, it's it's they've done some significant amount of work for it um, on it, you know, for 
people are releasing a game that's just about 15 hours in length, because like I said, you know, the Borderlands 3 had the same problem when it came out, but um, as far as graphical performance went on PC, but it was quickly corrected in a, in a day one or shortly after day one patch. Um, so I didn't really have that long to worry about it. It's like I tried to play it out of the box. I walked away from it for a week. I came back the next week, and by that it had been patched and was running fine on my systems. Um, so, you know, but but this this one, you know, he, he, here we are in this generation of, and I've I've been running it against, you know, I guess it it didn't run that great on my RTX twenty seventy. Um, and then I had problems when I ran it on my uh, Radeon RX 5700 uh, XT on a on which was running on a box with an box with an older Ryzen chipset, and I suspect that the Ryzen chipset was the problem. Um, I ran it on a box uh, with a newer uh, Intel Alder Lake uh, Z690 chipset, um, you know, by ASUS, uh, and it ran fine there but i mean here we are in this era of you know alder lake chips which are incredibly performant you know and um and now i'm running it on a 3060 and it's still putting those graphics cards right in those pcs to work so it's i i think that there's been some some updates and some um you know some more uh, some more graphical magic kind of thrown in the direction of of how hard it makes gpus work which is really tough to tell on in a cell shaded game you really have to like go digging for whatever level of additional detail that they've thrown in um and i haven't um i will say you know we did talk um a few months ago i think i went back and was playing some borderlands 2 and you know cell shading is cell shading you can you know like it or dislike it I, I used to kind of formally not be as much of a fan but one thing i will say is you know after uh, revisiting borderlands 2 a few months ago it's it's definitely one of those graphical styles that holds up over time it doesn't feel like it ages as much as you know kind of a more realistic looking um shooter and instead of graphics and and graphical palette and it responds well to, you know to, to upgrades um over time so i'm not gonna throw as much hater raid <laughs> at it this time around as i did <laughs> you know in the past when i played those borderlands games yeah i mean that's always the nice thing about the, the cell shading this you know it holds up they you could look at like wind waker and you can you know even though it's that's probably more cartoony cell shading but still uh it holds up even even now even like the older like Wii U version or something, so without the remakes or remasters, so that's always a good style to use, which is probably why Nintendo uses it <laughs> a lot nowadays. So, um, all right, so let's go on to my second game, and this one's gonna be pretty quick. I actually only played a little bit, maybe mm, half hour, forty five minutes. Uh, it's Subnautica, uh, a survival survival game, but you're basically it's mostly underwater or in water. Uh, I know my son had been watching uh, some. Uh, videos on this i was like oh this kind of looks kind of cool uh, i didn't realize uh or maybe i just kind of forgot that it's a survival game so i was like oh, you know i'm kind of um big in the survival games now oh, lately last few years so i you know i downloaded on xbox one x uh installed it and i was playing for a little bit uh, for a little bit and i was just i liked it but because i was playing uh i've also been went back into arc i've been playing that for the last couple months or so month and a half uh and i was like oh man i, I can't i can't <laughs> i can't do another survival game right now like there's only one i can one at a time like shooters yeah fine i can jump you know back and forth between those you know like when i was playing like call of duty and, and apex and you know Fortnite, i can just you know bounce between those but subnautica something like subnautica and arc you really got to kind of pay attention to the game uh because you gotta well for me at least i, I mean you gotta like there's not really a tutorial and stuff in these games so you gotta look up a lot of stuff or at least i do i think most people probably do or a lot of people do so you know i was like i don't want to i'm still looking stuff you know up for arc uh which i've been playing like on and off for the last whatever five years or four years however long it's been out so i was like i didn't want to go through another one like that right at least right now not right now so maybe i'll, I'll come back to that one eventually subnautica so um uh I, I liked what i played though so far i mean it's you know it's got the usual you know you got to hunt and you know craft and you know build stuff and all this other stuff i think that every once in a while too you'll find like an island that you can go into and explore. So it's, it, you know, kind of breaks up the monotony of just going underwater the whole time. So, but like, it's like I said, for now, it's just, it's just something too big, too much, too much of a gameplay uh, thing that I, I just can't get into right now since I'm playing Ark still. So uh, I'm just going to 
pass on it for now. So, um, all right. So with that, unless you have any questions, I am going to head on over to the round robin. Uh, we'll do our picks plays later in the month. Uh, we'll skip that for now. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, and I'm going to jump into Scribblots Mega Pack for the Switch. Uh, it was actually on sale for like six dollars, I believe, five or six bucks. Uh, and this actually has uh, Scribblots Unlimited, so it's two games: Scribblots Unlimited and Scribblots Unmask, a DC Comics adventure. Uh, and these were, I believe, originally on the. Th- I believe the 3DS, maybe even one of them was on the DS uh, back in the day. I forgot I was going to look it up. But uh, so the, these, if you don't know what these games are, they, the, you get dropped into this world and kind of a, it's a puzzle game. I should say not kind of, it is a puzzle game. And you can basically write down pretty much most or all words like chair, desk, you know, you can do adjectives, you could do all these other kind of things, nouns and stuff. Uh, and you can, you know, you have to solve these puzzles. And what's nice about that is you can solve them in different ways. So say like you have like a cat in a tree, excuse me, stuck in a tree. That was one of the first ones actually that I uh, ran into uh, doing scribble outs unlimited. Um, and, you know, you can, you know, say just jetpack and you throw on a jetpack and you can fly up there and get it or you could say you know i want an axe or a chainsaw and you could just cut the tree down and you know you get the, the cat down that way so there's just different ways you can go about doing puzzles so that's kind of cool kind of nice you know you can even revisit them and you know just do different stuff uh i the one thing back in the day when i was playing uh not i never played unlimited before so it's kind of a more of a story mode because uh, some of the, I think the first couple of scribble knots were just kind of like, oh, okay, here we're going to throw you into like kind of like a, a section or a round of just kind of these puzzles. And then it goes to a different set of puzzles, you know, kind of just go back and forth. But actually, there's uh, a storyline in uh, Scribble Knots Unlimited. So kind of going through that. I started with that because I actually played the DC, I had the DC uh, Universe one before. So uh, I actually already played that. But since it was so cheap, I was just like, yeah, you know, I'll pick these up again. So, and, and like I said, I never played Unlimited. So I'm going through the, that one. And it uh, revolves around the main character and his like family, and I don't want to get into it and spoil stuff. I mean, it's not like a huge you know story or anything interesting. And I, it is interesting, but you know, just like I don't want to spoil it. But you know, it revolves around his family, and you got to help one of his family members, and you kind of meet all his other family members. So he's got like some ridiculous like forty one brothers and sisters. So it's. <laughs> And they actually kind of go through like his family thing at the at the very beginning. I was like, oh, I was like, okay, that's interesting that he has so many siblings. But yeah, I'm going through that now, and it, it's fun. I I, I always like the, these games. So I've, like I said, I had the first couple uh, back on the on the handhelds. The, and I've only played these on uh, yeah, I've only played these handheld for now on the Switch, um, which is pretty much most games. But uh, I mean, and, and it's you kind of have it's kind of like a hand drawn, <clears throat> excuse me, like a hand drawn look, like penciled kind of pencil sketch look to it so it's nothing you know graphically you know powerhouse or anything it's just a puzzle game so more than likely i'll probably just exclusively uh play it uh handheld but maybe every once in a while i might throw it on the on the big screen just to see you know how it is so um you know kind of bright colors and you know yeah it's not like i have to worry about like dark colors or shadows and stuff like that at least not on any of the the worlds i've ever seen before so i think i don't think i'll have a problem on the the touch screen and the touch screen or i'm sorry on the switch there's also touchscreen components to it, so that's kind of nice too, where you can kind of like drag and drop stuff that you don't want and just kind of throw it away or put it back in your backpack and not have to worry about the buttons and stuff. It's a little bit quicker, so it's kind of nice to have that that added incentive or added gameplay in there. So that is Scribblouts. Uh, I don't know if you've ever played Scribblouts before. Game? I, I have not. No, okay. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a fun little puzzle game, so you know, it, gets, it gets you thinking about stuff. Uh, but you have been playing some more Destiny 2. Yeah, so this is, uh, yet again, another revisit um, of things that I've talked about on the show recently uh, as well. So uh, I have been p- going through and playing iterations of you know, all three of my characters now that I only have the one account. Because <laughs> I don't have consoles anymore. I guess technically I still have my character set, my fire team on, uh, on Stadia. Um, but essentially, you know, I'm settling down to, you know, one Hunter, one Warlock, and one Titan. Um, and I was going back and playing some more, uh, with my Titan, uh, in this run. So, um, it's just kind of weird what the syncopation is between, like, the different characters. Because I don't know why I, it, it seems like sometimes one character lags, you know, in their progression in the story, even though 
I may have been playing with that character for longer, right, on this specific expansion. Um, so my Titan got pretty far last night. I definitely progressed the story through um, an additional, not necessarily a surprise reveal, but just a, a significant deal that just kind of raises the stakes a little bit um, in trying to, you know, figure out what's going on. And it seems like at this point in the story kind of... Um, negates a lot of what you've learned up to this point and you know you've got to ascertain you know now how much of of what's unfolding you know relates to things that you've seen before or are they just completely unrelated so um but uh but it was neat you know you get you know plenty of loot it definitely definitely jumped the shark on the platforming so there were just a few levels of well-known fact that i'm not a huge fit you know the better a shooter a first-person shooter is the less I want platforming in it, um, and Destiny 2 is absolutely one of the best shooters in terms of gunplay physics. But like the stinking platforming just really got out of hand <laughs> this time. So, um, and even even the puzzles to to a certain extent, a lot of the puzzles like just just degenerate into this. Um, you know, in this stage, you know, running around to see where they've hidden or tucked away like six different little symbols that you all have that you have to fire before the timer runs out in order to gain access to like the next room um so you know there's that so you know i've i've i have found playing destiny 2 you know the the main window dressing part of it um you know more than i have in a long time but in order to really get to that i gotta endure you know 20 percent of uh kind of small problems and small design aspects that i would just as soon <laughs> do without I think you're muted if you're trying to talk. Sorry. Uh, you also, sorry about that. You also have a couple stories here uh, to accompany uh, Destiny 1, uh, the first one uh, about skill based, or well, I should just say unbalanced uh, PvP matchmaking. Well, that's the claim. And of course, uh, and I was listening to a good friend of mine's uh, podcast. Uh, this morning, and one of the developers uh, she was interviewing, you know, made the you use the quote, which I've you know voiced similar sentiment sentiments very much before in the past. He said, you know, um, gamers, there's there's nothing in the world gamers hate more than uh, games. So um, this is an instance of you know the Destiny Two community is a vocal community. I, I feel very often that you know it it expresses the voice of like the few players who have dumped, you know, a thousand or two thousand hours into the game and then still insist that they're bored or that Bungie's doing something wrong, which I just have, you know, not much patience or tolerance for. Um, but, you know, this is a textbook example of, you know, Destiny uh, Destiny 2 introduced skill-based matchmaking. Everyone complained about it, so they turned it off, and now everyone's complaining about their matches being unbalanced. So I'm like, well, you know, I mean... I, I think the reality is after having played skill-based matchmaking, you know, for an entire year when I was deep into um, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, I'm just like, look, man, you guys got to get over, like, feeling, you know, chest-thumping because you seal-clubbed some newbie who, like, is just got in the game, you know, in games where there's no SBMM. MM. Like, SBMM is the way things should be and the way games should be played. You should be matched up with people of equal strengths you should you know if you're a mid-tier player you should play you know in your field and in your bracket with players that are going to challenge you you know without you know necessarily feeling like you're being matched up against the experts now you know if you you know if it were a, a mid or a low level player who wanted to play higher players in order to get good i mean yeah the system should accommodate that um but in general as a default you know sbmm is the way things should be played and so now people are asking for the balances to be for the matches to be more balanced, which it sounds like the Destiny Two community manager is leaning forward and kind of saying, "Well, the way to fix that is to have us allow us to turn on SBMM." So, uh, so just to get out the final kind of details of this, I'm sorry I didn't read it, but um, this story actually because I'm in reader mode now, I don't know even know this story uh, over on Forbes by Paul Tassi. Uh, Destiny Two addresses this constantly unbalanced PvP matchmaking. Uh, if you've played Destiny 2 PvP for any amount of time for a while now, you'll probably run into a familiar situation where you might perform quite well, but those but you lose the match by a wide margin. In the results screen, it looks like the one above 
in the above, in the results screen, it looks like the one above, which you can't see because if you're an audio listener um, or a video listener, because I don't have it up on the screen right now, where the other team posts dominant KDs while every member of your team besides you is underperforming. Or it's possible you're in one of the other two roles, the steamrolling team or the five sub 1.0 people who clearly shouldn't be in this match. So, I mean, the answer to this is SBMM. You know, they've the Destiny crew has told people that it's been turned off. Um, I think they might have still have like some first. Um, it sounds like in, in in a rotation, like there was there were some like early stages or first few maps or something. Maybe that uh, that new players play that they're still SBMM, but then after that, you quickly branch away from it. So it'll be interesting to see how the continued relationship between the Destiny Two developers and the Destiny Two community goes. You know, I've been saying this week. You know, it's it's all about relationships and kind of the relationship you decide that you're going to have right with the you know, gaming vendor and how, you know, what relationship the vendor is going to have with you. And when people feel like they're in a relationship that's not working, they should go ahead and <laughs> depart um, and go do something else. So we'll see how that turns out. Yeah, he mentions at the end of his, uh, of the uh, article, or well, the guy's uh, Twitter post, that uh, the majority of Crucible playlists don't have SBMM anymore. So I wonder which ones actually do, like he didn't actually... Uh, specify like which ones do and the don't and i haven't played it for a long time the last time i played it they i, I definitely i just got like i just got trounced i was that i was the seal <laughs> in that situation because i couldn't do anything to anyone on the other side of the, on the other team so uh it's definitely not on but um so i was gonna mention something about the iron bed the iron banner is something different though right that lets that um that has more to do with the weapons, right? Uh, the Iron Banner. No, I, I don't know. I know. Maybe yeah, we'll, that's more of a question for DB. But um, yeah, probably DB because I don't. I just don't play the PvP stuff in Destiny Two at all. Okay. Yeah, because I, I know there was something with the Iron Banner. I don't know if it was with matchmaking or just like I think you can use like the actual like the customizations or whatever that that you do in your guns, or if there isn't even that, or there's something to do with like that kind of situation where. Because uh, I always thought that's what the Iron Banner was for, and that's why they kind of just kept, you know, SBB or SBMM on on the normal playlist. But I, like he said, it, it's been turned off, you know, for years now. And I like how he says, like every season, they check just to make sure it doesn't turn on. So I was like, oh, that's that's good. <laughs> it's like a window, like a Windows update. You know, you got to check everything because something might have been turned off or something. But kind of funny. Uh, and then um, you actually have another story on. Um, uh, for Bungie's, uh, or just dev- uh, Bungie as a developer on what they're doing t- for Return to Office, or, or lack of. Yeah, so a bit of industry news. Uh, this article, again, I'm struggling. This article up on Polygon. I don't know who the author was, because reader mode on Chrome. Um, Destiny developer Bungie goes digital first as other studios return to offices. Destiny 2 developer Bungie announced Tuesday that it will move towards a digital first studio culture, meaning many employees won't have to physically work at the studio's Bellevue, Washington headquarters. In a year, in a year where some companies like Activision Blizzard and Riot Games are mandating a return to office without mask or vaccine requirements, Bungie is transitioning many positions to this fully remote structure in seven approved states. So the article goes on a little bit to talk about how, you know, um, different states have different laws, and I think this is one where they only wanted to transition people if they didn't then incur some type of tax penalty in that state. So. And so only certain states have been uh, cleared to transition to this work style as a norm. Uh, Washington, California, Oregon, Illinois, Florida, North Carolina, and Texas. That is a really eclectically opposing Mm -hmm. set of states. That's really strange to me. Uh, It might be worth digging into the tax laws or whatever it is that are feeling feeling disrupted because it's hard for me to believe that Texas and California line up be, being similar in any manner, um, particularly where it goes to, you know, labor practices. Um, but uh, but anyway, those are the seven states that are approved for remote work, and uh, Bungie will be transitioning to those uh, to those positions. So it'll be interesting. You know, um, a lot of discussions this week on Twitter about uh, you know the appointment of Activision Blizzard's new um, diversity, equity, and inclusion officer. I can't remember her name. You know, but a lot of people were discussing, you know, you know, making things worse and uh, and making things narrow. But 
but I firmly feel that like with regards to this, for instance, because I was reading a, an article in the Wall Street Journal this week about how you know one company has made huge strides in cybersecurity because it's been hiring a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of developers and a lot of um, cybersecurity specialists um, like with autism or, or and things like that who would not perform well or may not like being in an office environment with a lot of other people around you know, but absolutely flourish when they're able to work remotely. Um, and a lot of what I've been trying to explain to people on Twitter is like that, like when you, when, when you know, your typical talent acquisition pipe and the way they source people isn't always a very wide net. It kind of gives you a, a narrow set of people. But, you know, when you have a diversity, equity, inclusion officer, you know, who comes in and says, hey, Maybe you should also have a recruiting program at historically black colleges, or maybe you should also, you know, post your job on job boards that like address this specific type of community. I'm like, that broadens the net. And so if you're only intaking, you know, 10 candidates every two weeks trying to fill a position, when you open that up to 25 candidates every two weeks, you know, trying to fill a position, right, that increases the likelihood that you're going to be able to fill those spots and is going to increase the speed with which, you know, you recruit people, you know, because, you know, HR and TA are always looking at metrics like time that it takes to actually hire a person from the day that the rec is opened. And so if those types of things, uh, those types of things help. These types of programs help moving people remotely because you will, you know, when you start to open recs, you know, there are more people who are going to apply for recs, you know, when when there are offers for it to be hybrid and partially remote. So all good. And you got to you got to love a story about a, a software development organization uh, tooling itself to allow everybody to work remote, because in most cases, unless you're handling specific type of you know data or doing a specific job in terms of oversight of like industrial facilities, like there is, you know, 87% of the time, no reason why, you know, a software group can't be entirely remote. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to keep quiet because I just had to reopen our office <laughs> where I work currently. And I, it wasn't, uh, I'll, well, I'm just going to say no comments. <laughs> Let's just, so we'll move on from that. But yeah, they, they mentioned here uh, how, um, uh, I think it was Riot Games and Activision, I believe, uh, just kind of their stances on uh, the work from home and just kind of, you know, Obviously, some people are you know mad about it. Other people are like, "Oh yeah, sure, I want to go back to work." But uh, it's it's you know it's something we're going to have to think about nowadays, and just in general terms. You know, it's you know that's the way of the world. Fortunately, the way of the world right now, or at least the near future. Uh, hopefully, not forever, but you know, you never know. Um, all right, so that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, any other comments on that one? Nope, just wanted to. I'll throw, the, throw a couple of Destiny news stories that were pertinent and timely onto the onto the pile after uh, talking about having played the game. All right, cool. All right, so up next I have Outriders that I have actually com continued to play. Excuse me, and actually played a lot more of this. Uh, and this one has been exclusively through XCloud. I've been playing. Um, I try to play a little bit on my phone, but that's uh, it's not a game that I can. <laughs> I think I'm going to quit doing that because it's it's just not a game that I can play on my phone and. and it's not so much like I can't see anything or like, you know, I, I can't tell where stuff is. It's more the controls. It's just like I, I need that, that control, the regular controller, not just like that little, you know, um, device that I put on my phone now. But So, but I, I thought you had gotten a controller that like wraps around your phone and holds your phone. Yeah, but for shooters, uh, it's it's all right. I, there's something weird with I don't know if it's just something with sensitivity. Maybe I have to to meddle with or you know kind of fool around with. Um, and maybe Outriders is kind of a better a uh, better game to do it on than say something like you know because I've I've also played uh, Fortnite on there. Uh, and I you know I've been done, I've done all right, but it's kind of like on the Switch. Like it's there's something with that kind of like kind of far away grip that we know when I'm playing a shooter that it just kind of throws me off. Uh, and at least with Outriders, you know this is just pve or at least right now i don't know if there's any pvp at all in outriders or not yeah, well I, I can understand have you tried i mean so they make clamps that just attach to like your regular xbox controller that's that's like what i have i mean i, I don't do xbox cloud gaming anymore but you know both you know when doing stadia you know and uh and the couple of times that i played xbox cloud gaming you know on the go that's that's what i have is a clamp that'll go over my phone and concurrently attach to a regular controller so i can play it that way 
Yeah, I actually have one of those. Um, I, I bought that one a while ago, actually, uh, um, maybe like a year and a half ago. And um, it, it's fine. Uh, and, I, I, you know, obviously it's a lot better to, to play with my the actual controller. Um, but I, I don't know. It's There's something with, like, just the way like i don't know i can't i can't even explain it like what the what the issue was with the with the clamp itself uh you know because it just clamps on the, in the controller and you have the uh the phone you know right above it and maybe it's just because i think it's one of the reasons is because and I, maybe i just didn't never notice before because uh, you know i didn't have you know the the controller and the screen i'm trying to look at on the same thing i think i move around a lot when i'm actually like playing something even with just a like, controller like, even with the xbox controller that obviously doesn't have uh, any like gyroscopes or anything it's not like it's like a, a Wii road or a, um, a joy con and then you know when you're trying to like when i'm playing and i'm like moving around obviously it's you know you're gonna it's gonna throw you off when you're what, what you're looking at so i think that's like part of one of the major reasons uh so uh and, and i guess you kind of get that with the, the clamp with not the clamp controller but with the other controller but i don't know there's something about like if i have the controllers off to the side maybe just because i've been playing with the switch now for so long that i've kind of you know um you know program myself to just kind of stay still when i have when i have something like that so i don't know it's just kind of weird with with that clamp there's something kind of off about it so um but do back you, to outriders no do, go ahead do you have a do you have a tablet by chance i don't know because yeah. i mean if you ever get interested in it, like i mean i found that like you know as i played around right with cloud gaming that at the end, at the end of the day like my best experience that i consistently always had was playing the cloud you know putting the cloud app on a tablet and then playing in front of a tablet with a regular controller i mean it was the probably the closest thing to you know regular couch gaming you know console couch gaming that there is um so i don't know that that might be just be another mode to try out yeah i think because that way you could just bluetooth it right i'm assuming yeah yeah Yeah, i was kind of thinking about it too but i I don't know then then it's like it's just a little TV at that point. I was like, I might as well just play on my TV. So I don't know. It's just weird. Uh, maybe one day I'll, I might get a, a tablet too. And I think the thing is, like, if I was going to a tablet, that was that would be something more that I would use for like when I'm, you know, on vacation or you know, if I take a road trip for work or something, you know, that might be a better use. Well, uh, that, and actually, that I mean, that was specifically the use case that I had yeah. for. Yeah, for me, I mean, I'm just sitting here, you know, like on my, on my, you know, on the couch and stuff. So I just, you know, if it's just like a little handheld, like, yeah. Cause, I mean, that was why, like, MLB, I think the show was kind of like the perfect game for that usage because it's, you know, it's not something twitchy and, you know, <clears throat> you know, I don't have to move around a lot. So, um, but like I said, with, <clears throat> excuse me, with Outriders, it's just a little bit more involved. Um, but I've been actually been really enjoying this game. And I, I did, I, I knew it was kind of like a, a bit of a looter shooter i guess like you get you know you get drops you get guns and armor and stuff like that but um but i didn't realize i had like the power aspect like kind of a destiny you know um not really i guess yeah those are classes that you can you can pick from like right now i picked the i think it's the techno mage or technomancer or something like that and so i got like ice powers or at least right now i have ice powers i don't know if i can change those later on but uh, so like my melee now is like a, a nice punch where I like freeze the, the person when I punch them and hit them. Uh, and then I have like a grenade. Well, I think the grenade might be like a normal grenade. It's like explosive ice grenade or something, but it just explodes basically. Uh, and then like my ultimate is this uh, turret that I throw down and that's just shoot ice. So that freezes like whatever it hits. So that's, that's kind of cool. Like I didn't realize I had that. That was part of what Outriders was. So um, playing through that, like I said, I'm playing the Techno Mage and it's it's pretty fun. I like it. Uh, I know you could play co-op in it. Like I said, I don't know if there's a PvP or not, but uh, I haven't tried that out yet. Uh, and I don't know. I think I said four man. Maybe I'm assuming probably like the rest of them. Maybe three at the most, or not the least. But uh, and you can match make if you know just a random person if you want, uh, or you know invite a friend. But like I said, I haven't tried that out to see like how that works because I. I don't know if there's like strikes, like a destiny kind of strikes or those kind of like missions or not. Like so far I've just been going through the story and I think I've only had like maybe a couple of side things that I can try or try to do if I wanted to. But um, uh, it's it's interesting. But I, I think one of the things that pulled me into besides the, the, the powers and uh, stuff was actually the story is kind of neat just because there's there is a um, 
like a time jump within the story, which I kind of like when, when they do that in movies and in TV. So, uh, you know, your, your characters like thrust 30 years in, in, uh, into the future. And this is like, this is like far future too. So it, just in general, but then there's like another time jump, um, that happens. So, uh, it's pretty interesting. At least I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it right now. So I'm going to continue to play that. Uh, and like I said, I've just been playing that, uh, on the series X and the Xbox one X, uh, just purely through the, the cloud. Uh, so I'm going to con- continue playing Outriders. So it's been, it's been fun. I don't know. Did you ever try Outriders? I don't remember if you, if you played it or not. Nope. No, I have not. Yeah. Okay. I would say give that a try and maybe, maybe that's one of the games we can kind of try, um, in the future if we, if ever, when we do the, uh, like kind of our play, our play nights and stuff. So, uh, I think that'd be a good co-op game for all of us to try to jump into. So, so from from the future and it's still in the future <laughs> you've uh, been playing fallout 4 yeah so this is following kind of the same story line that occurred when i finally got around to trying out skyrim um which of course i just i have a penchant to not get into games that are overly hyped and so when i feel like you know 90 percent of the gaming community is playing a game i'm just like i look at it more skeptically and wonder how much group think is going on there so um i did not jump on to you know skyrim back in the day when it first came out uh and ditto for fallout 4 and the same as my experience was in uh in um skyrim um this game has quickly catapulted to uh where i'm having an internal discussion about like rebadging you know my favorite game uh of all time you know which for me is is max Payne. that's still the answer that i give people when i'm asked that question but I, there's there's an ongoing fight in the background between Max Payne, uh, Skyrim, and Fallout. In which case, I'm going to have to kind of fall and Fallout Four. I'm going to have to kind of shuffle that deck and kind of see what's the best way for it to lay out. Um, but uh, but yeah, I'm loving Fallout Four from the initial cu- uh, character customization to you know both Fallout and Skyrim do really good jobs so far from what I've played of not being a chore and not getting in your way too much. Um, they, they offer you a wide open world to go, as far as I can tell, into it however you see fit. Um, one of the things that I've done with Fallout 4, and again, it wasn't necessarily hugely intentional, but you know, I got the power armor fairly early on um, because you know when you, when you enter the area where you find it, um, I didn't go upstairs right away. I actually, my search pattern took me downstairs to where there's the fuse, the first fusion core that you need to power the full, the power armor. And so, you know, at the point where then the character, you know, tells me, hey, there's power armor on the roof, but you got to go downstairs and defeat some bandits and get, um, you know, a, a power core. I'm like, huh, little does he know I've already done that. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, I got the armor fairly early on, you know, defeated the first battle, which has you fighting a, a death stalker. Um, which is this kind of mutated beast, um, and uh, and uh, some uh, some raiders. Um, but then, you know, then I went back in and did the whole scripted dialogue with the set of characters that I was helping out. And uh, the guy says, "Hey, you know, we're taking off to this next town." Um, but then, you know, there's a there's a fortune teller kind of in the group, and she tells me that uh, the person I'm looking for is in i think it's called i think it's called diamond city and i had the power armor so i was like i'm just gonna walk to diamond city (laughs) and bypass everything so i bypassed like 10 different like towns and points of interest and i'm absolutely sure you were supposed to go adventuring in to help leveling up Um, but i just strode across the map um, just, you know, just as I got into Diamond City, my armor ran out of power, so I abandoned it, you know, and I know where it is to go back and get it, um, as soon as I find uh, a power core, um, but I just, like, abandoned it and finished the rest of this short distance on foot, um, and, you know, and, and met a character who I guess you think of as being somebody that, you know, if I, if I read all the lore on it stuff, probably would see that it's a person that I meet, like, midway through the game, <laughs> but I'm like, Forget it, you know, I've done this now. Let's just see how it turns out. So um, I, I am having to proceed into combat, you know, very cautiously. Um, I, uh, I encountered my first um, 
I think they were super mutants, um, super mutant raiders, raiders um, in a abandoned church, and that took me multiple iterations and quick saves <laughs> to get back to after you know my character was killed because I was like, all right, man, I, I got this mission like partially finished. I do not want to have to go back and do what I've done all over again. Um, but uh, but finally, I worked uh, my way through it. Um, so yeah, I'm just having a really good, really good experience. A good experience with the NPCs that you're meeting along the way. I, I did meet the dog, who I think you're probably encouraged to take along with you, but I just <laughs> left him at my like temporary encampment, like on the other side of the map. So I don't know if I'll ever see him again. <laughs> but uh, but you're meeting some decent NPCs, some cool NPCs along the way, and uh, it's a it's a pretty decent story. It, it paints a great tapestry of a background without tightly wiring you into go talk to this person, now go talk to that person, now go talk to this person, right, before you even um, can start an adventure or a mission. You know, I'm, I'm sure that you have to have those pieces in place, but at least it, it gives you some providence to kind of, you know, like, play around in the sandbox uh, without necessarily funneling you down, like, a, a specific kind of numeric, deterministic path. So, did, did you get to the, the building yet, the base building stuff yet? Uh, I have encountered, you know, my first workshop table, and so I did um, build some prefabricated parts. Um, but I just haven't, uh, I haven't stopped anywhere long enough to where I'd be interested in kind of laying down roots. You know, if if I had followed that group of settlers who, uh, you know, I um, defended um, against the round of raiders, you know, if I had traveled with them, I probably would have gotten someplace where I would have put up some shelters, but. At least right now, I'm not digging too deeply into that particular mechanic, even though, like I said, I, I have enough raw materials and I see where, you know, uh, you know where, where you're supposed to go to, to build that stuff out. But right now, I'm just trudging down the line of, of the adventure. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering because I didn't know if you, <laughs> if you had skipped that part when you skipped all the, <laughs> those towns earlier in the, in the game. So, but no, then, then you mentioned the dog. I was like, I remember getting to the dog too. So, I, and I know it wasn't too far after that where, or even before that, where you could do like the base building stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I played Fallout. I actually enjoyed Fallout 4 a lot better than 3. Uh, I don't know if you ever played 3 or not. Uh, and, and, and I mentioned, I'm sure I've mentioned this many times, but, uh, you know, 3 was just, you know, just a drab, just the atmosphere. And, you know, yeah, I get it. Like, there's a nuke that went off or multiple nukes. Uh, and, you know, everything's destroyed. But at least in Fallout 4, there's a little bit more color and a little bit, you know, you get the trees and stuff because you're in Virginia or West Virginia. Um, uh, so you get that more, you know, kind of varied uh, uh, environment than in, in Fallout 3. It was just kind of this, you know, gray, like, brownish, like, just just everything destroyed kind of look and it was just like a, that got to me and i just like i couldn't go on before yeah i actually played for quite a bit and actually i wouldn't mind going back to it one day maybe but once again that's like kind of a big you know one of those big game not necessarily that you have to look up but just kind of a big game that you have to get into so um on like skyrim and I th even though i kind of like usually i like the more sci-fi you know kind of you know industrial kind of stuff like fallout i actually like skyrim or the elder scroll series a little bit more than i than i have the the fallout series but but starfield is what you have here uh, a new story going to come up that might like totally get me into you know the style of gameplay even more than um th than, th than those two ever did so uh let's let's talk about some feature or a feature that's coming back or it's coming to starfield yeah, it says Starfield, but it's really a Fallout 4 story, so um, what they just mentioned is that, you know, uh, companions like those that you have in Fallout 4 um, will be um, will be utilized in Starfield, so who knows, maybe you might be able to actually own, you know, your own droid or some equivalent uh, in Starfield, so... Um, Bethesda hasn't revealed any of those characters yet. Now, again, that was at that time. I can't remember if they've revealed, like, the first, like, companion kind of NPC. I thought they did a yeah, YouTube... like a robot. Yeah, some yeah. utility robot or something that they showed. Right. All right, all right. Yeah. Um, so, so I have been introduced to Codsworth um, and have have seen him and gone away from him. I, I don't know if I'm going to rendezvous back with him uh, in the future, but, you know, he's, an all, he's been an all right dude <laughs> so far. Um, mm -hmm. Seems like maybe if I had stuck with him or brought him along with me or gotten to that part of the story, he would have been a, somebody effective to bring around. That's one of my problems with the dog. Like, I've I've noticed that the the dog will 
engage in combat if you're being if you know, if you're in combat even if it's a threat that you could easily take out and he seems to proceed to do nothing but get himself into situations where he's going to need to be healed and I'm like I don't need this today like you stay here <laughs> so um we'll see how this plays I haven't gotten attached to any uh human companions yet so that probably is a you know significantly different experience than you know the dog so we'll just see how that turns out uh in my reverse playthrough of uh, a fallout 4 but in the meantime it's it's good to hear that we've got a uh, campaign that's coming to uh to starfield yeah, which is due, that, that was... sorry go ahead which is which is due out on november 11th 2022 i don't know if that's veterans day this year i can't remember how that holiday works but um it may that may be veterans day or it may be you know a day or two before veterans day and it's always good you know Somebody always tr lays claim to uh, to shipping a game as we're walking up on Veterans Day to give you know the adults and the kids something to play uh, over the three day weekend if that's what you so choose to do. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting to see if. Uh, well, I mean, they already gave the exact date. I'm assuming it's going to make it, but you know, you never know. That you know, it could be pushed back or so. But I, I'm assuming they've been working on this for quite a while now. So uh, I'm pretty excited for this and. Uh, you know, the, obviously there hasn't been really anything, I mean, more than like just, I know they've kind of done those like dev diary, I guess you want to call them. They released like, I don't know, like once a month or so these past few months. So and kind of just showing like artwork and stuff like that. Uh, maybe a little bit like a screenshot here and there, but, you know, we really don't know what this is going to be. Is it going to be like, you know, just you stuck on one planet, multiple planets, you know, you know, what's, how it's going to, how it's going to turn out. So um, I'm pretty excited for this one. Well, hopefully it, uh, uh, it, it pans out, so they don't have the troubles like they have for the last couple of uh, the games that they've put out. Uh, all right, so you have another uh, Fallout Four story here, a scary story. Yeah, and I won't take too long on it. it it's it's billed with a you know sensationalist headline for a little bit. Um, this game uh, over from Gamer Rant: Strange Fallout Four clip shows Haunted Vault eighty uh, eight. I'm not going to go into it because you know it's it's more of a. Uh, April Fool's kind of style right up, but um, well, basically it's it's a guy who was granted access to Vault eighty eight once he once he completed. Um, there was a specific mission uh, that they. It was a DLC. It looks like uh, Vault Tech Workshop DLC. Yeah, kind of near the bottom of the article. Yeah. So uh, so once you complete that, you'll be given access to like this special uh, building um, within the local area. So and it mentions that you know as he's kind of moving and it's it's like an old style military base um and it mentions you know as he's moving around in it there there shouldn't be people in it but you know he goes into various rooms and he can see objects moving around as if you know there were character animations associated with it um of course like i said the article is billed as you know haunted vault 88 it's really just a bunch of npcs in the space that you know didn't make it there their way out of the rendering pipeline with skins applied over them and so are just in there moving around as a bunch of bundle of shader points, you know, lifting weights and stuff. So I just thought that was uh it was funny. I think it, it's it's less about the re the real impact of this particular story, but more to show that, you know, um you know, despite the disappointment of Fallout seventy six that there's still a, a Bethesda community who rallies around, you know, little anecdotal stories like that so i keep saying you know my, my hope is that bethesda you know gets its mojo back actually i i, I, I kind of hope all of the b studios get their mojo back you know um uh blizzard uh bioware and um and bethesda you know re return back to you know where they were kind of the, the headliner studios of of their day so we'll see how that goes yeah, back in the heyday. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if things can turn around. Uh, all right. So uh, my final game here is uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, when I talked about earlier, it was the Ark Survival Evolved. So uh, I've been playing a little bit more with my son this past uh, well, a couple of weeks because I, I wasn't on last week's show. Uh, but there's actually this past week I've actually kind of branched out on my my own again, uh, and I've been playing just solo on one of the um, I think it's actually one of the crossplay servers. So they have like I'm playing on Xbox. Um, my series x and you know when you go into like the server list 
little server browser list. So they have like just the, you know, the Xbox official servers, uh, dedicated servers. And then they have cross-play servers where, you know, obviously you can play with um, PlayStation, PC, I believe Switch also too, because it is on the Switch, uh, which I tried a little bit on when it first came out. But uh, it's, I actually bounced between, or not between, uh, I been trying out like maybe like three or four servers before that and like a lot of them you know this has been around for a while so a lot of them are full and and there's and i don't play pve i don't play pvp uh, on arc so but what you can do in pve is you can put down um i think it's only i think it's like posts or columns where when you do that uh you can't like as somebody else can't uh, build within like a certain radius around that that object. So people will just like dot the the environment with like you know these these columns and stuff or you know whatnot, and so you can't build anything. <clears throat> so finally, I found this one server. I was actually able to finally you know lay roots on and then start my little um, my little base that I finally started. And I've I've tamed a bunch of animals finally, and I've I've kind of learned how to do that a little bit better than when I when I originally started out. Um, so I, I'm just, I'm just kind of having fun with Ark again, <laughs> Ark again, you know, you know, if you don't know what Ark is, uh, it's a survival game, you know, you're, you dropped on this island, uh, with just a bunch of dinosaurs and kind of not just dinosaurs, but like ancient, um, uh, creatures. Like you got like these huge boa constrictors of like, like super like size of a bus or like two buses length and, you know, all these other kind of mammals, like large mammals and terror birds. If you don't know what that is, like a giant, uh, you know. I don't know, I'd say ostrich size, maybe even, maybe like a giraffe, actually, maybe a little bit bigger. This bird that used to, you know, live, what, thousands of years ago, and, so, you know, just all these other you know, kind of creatures. So um, I've just been doing that and having a lot of fun. And, and I finally tamed a, um, what is it, a oh, pteranodon, so I can kind of, like, fly around and, and trying to gather some more materials that I, I can't really get to in, in just the area that I'm in now. So um, I'm having a lot of fun with that and, and just, you know, uh, I've always liked kind of like the base building stuff too. I've gotten a lot into that lately with, with these kind of games. <clears throat> so I've been, you know, I just got this big, like, it's basically like a wooden, like, fortress or not even fortress but it's a little base that I, and i'm starting to to build and then eventually i'll try to go into you know you can do stone and and metal and there's like glass and stuff like that but that's like you know like way past where i'm at right now so I, I just gotta level up and unlock that stuff and and you know i can start building you know my my fortified base and you can get like guns like right now i just have like you know like spears and both the regular bore and arrows but you can get like a compound bow or you can make a compound bow or you know guns and stuff like that and bombs and grenades so it's 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 pretty it's pretty involved but you know i think the one nice thing is when i was playing with my son just because we can we can you know gather so much materials <clears throat> excuse me a little bit easier when there's you know just more than one person so and that's what i kind of like kind of what i did but with random people like when i first started out like you know because obviously everything's due to the game so you know you want to kind of band together and i actually did that for a little while and then just like the person i was playing with never got on again so i kind of just like fell off the game until you know and that was years ago when it first came out when you know and now my son's starting to play it so it's kind of nice to to be able to actually at least play with somebody so um so i'm doing that um uh, any questions or anything uh game no no, not for me. Okay. So uh, along with Arc, since I'm playing it in the cloud, and obviously, uh, well, I guess that's the other thing. So I've been playing, I actually played it uh, on my phone on xCloud, through xCloud, which wasn't too bad of experience. The only problem with that, um, that, that device I have is I can't plug any like wired headphones or anything into it. I have to use like a Bluetooth headset or earbuds or whatever. Uh, so I haven't really done that yet just cause I don't really have a good pair other than my, uh, my Xbox headset, uh, that I can use. Uh, I got some other like kind of wireless earbuds, but they like, they're like, they're old and then they, they kind of lose charge kind of quickly. So I was like, I don't even bother with those. So I don't know if I'll play this. Maybe I'll just jump into the, the game every once in a while. Uh, Cause there is a time limit. Like I think you get like a week and then after a week, other people can actually destroy your stuff or like, I think um, like claim your animals and stuff like that. So I, you know, if I just have to like jump on real quick so I can like reset that time, I'll probably do that. Uh, and maybe just do a little bit of gathering here and there or something. But otherwise I'll probably just play on my, on my, either my series X or my Xbox one X. So, uh, but the accompanying story I have here uh, comes from uh, gameindustrybiz.biz. 
Uh, and this is from Danielle Partis. Uh, and it's uh, cloud gaming has generated almost 1.5 billion uh, in the past in 2021. And this is coming from Nuzu, which I'm not sure. I don't remember. I don't think they actually say what Nuzu like actually is in this article. Uh, I didn't get a chance to um, look it up, but obviously they like, you know, they gathered all the analytics and stuff. So, uh, so they say, um, uh, let me see. So from 2020, it was around 671 million uh, that it's generated in revenue. And then now obviously in this past year, it was uh, 1.5 billion. So basically doubled or almost, you know, over doubled uh, the amount from the previous year. Uh, and then they say uh, by 2024, it should be around 6.3 billion. So that's a pretty big jump in just a couple of years. Um, but I, I guess the other thing too was like, I don't like, I don't know how they gather, or like where they gathered this information from. Cause obviously when you talk about cloud gaming, like something like X cloud might be, I guess they can go kind of off the game pass subscriptions, I suppose. Cause I mean, it's, it's included in game pass and ultimate game pass. And then you got stuff like uh stadia, which is just like a straight, you know, that's just straight cloud gaming. So, uh, that would be pretty easy, but, um, uh, they also uh, highlight uh, the that like LG is looking to collaborate with uh, Nvidia to uh, I guess bring like their streaming service to their I'm assuming to their TVs at some point and actually and Samsung. So I mean I'm a, I know there's always been rumors too that Xbox was maybe might do that at some point, but uh, and that would probably make a lot of sense. Like it's I mean it's just going to be a small app that you throw on your TV just like any other thing you got now like Netflix and stuff. So. Um, uh, but yeah, I just thought that was kind of interesting. Like I, I, I just didn't even, you know, I wasn't even thinking like it just revenue wise, like how, I, how like X cloud and you know, all these other services were doing, like, I just, you know, I just jump in there and, you know, play. And that, that's kind of one of the things I guess now, uh, I guess last year, you know, last year I had my, my new year's resolution was to, to do just X pass, uh, or game, excuse me, game pass through the whole year. And I think this year is, is going to be more of like cloud gaming stuff, just kind of see how that how that pans out and how, you know, um, that works out for me throughout the year. So, and with Xbox, obviously you get, I think all of their first party for sure is on xCloud, I believe on, on day one or not, not too long after that. Um, I think it took a little bit, well, a little bit before, um, what was it? Flight Simulator came to, um, to xCloud and that might, that just might, just kind of a different beast than I think a normal game. So, um, than any other game, but, uh, most other stuff, you know, gets on there. And, and right now all I have is xCloud and, and there might be, you know, I might jump into something else. Maybe I go back to Stadia or something, even though I don't know how much longer that'll be around or if that, that you know, morphs into something else. But I don't know. I just thought it was kind of an interesting, just to kind of see the number, uh, that they, that they got out of there. I don't know if you had any thoughts on that, uh, game logic. No, no, not really. Okay, cool. All right, so I don't have... Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. You have one more game here that you're going to talk about. Bioshock Remastered. Yeah, so this came up on my radar, and um, unfortunately I already have a version of it from Steam, um, so I was able to pull that down and download it um, on, the, on that new Alder Lake machine. Um problem is, is actually I, I see it as a problem, so I'm so used to kind of dropping games and going back to games and kind of starting over fresh, um, but uh, damn you Steam, you do have cloud saves, and so um, I have, in the past I have like at times like not turned that on, I thought it used to be like a selectable option, um, but I've, the last few games that I've played um, appears that, you know, I either didn't opt out or whatever, and so got a cloud save out of it, so uh, it brought this down. As soon as I brought the game up, uh, and so I had to spend time, you know, the first time out, kind of trying to reorient myself, like, you know, if I was at the beginning of the game, uh, onboarding would be fine, but, you know, having to re-onboard in the middle of the dance is always a thing, and I did so, uh, hold on just a sec. Sorry, it's a really bad allergy day. <laughs> But, uh, you know, but, you know, and, and where I had left off is I left off, like, right in the vicinity of some bad guys. So, so like, the game comes up and, like, it's immediately you hear a big daddy stomping around somewhere. And I'm like, oh, great. So, um, I faced that big daddy right off the bat. And I was like, I was hoping for a little bit more of a warm-up. Um, 
but uh, but I did that. Grabbed uh, the I forget what they call the little girls, but sorry. Um, I think those are the little sisters. I think yes, the little sisters. Uh, so grabbed my little sister and harvested her. Harvested her, Adam. <laughs> so because I'm that's the way I'm playing the game. <laughs> this time I'm not letting anybody go and rescuing them. I'm getting all the Adam I can. Um, so. Uh, Pushed a little bit further, got to use my, like, uh, security... I forget what they call it, but it's like a security thing where um, if you throw it at a splicer, um, all the security cameras and gun mounts and all that stuff, like, focus their attention on that person. So there's a room that I came into where there was a um, secure... There was a security bot up high, and there was a security bot down low. These are both ground security bots um, who were chucking frag grenades, and the other one had a machine gun, and... Um, you know, it, it took me a while before I came into the room kind of the right way. It took me a while trying to play it and getting killed. Um, but uh, there's a splicer in the room that's, like, walking around. And, uh, you know, so I, I got within throwing distance of him and got an angle on him and then uh, hit him with, like, the security ball thing. Um, and so then he started being uh, fired on by the two security bots. And that whole made, you know, taking down that whole section about that much easier. Probably the most one I had was... Uh, was I encountered then the second Big Daddy uh, on that level. Um, and, you know, again, and so he, he came lumbering around the corner. I ducked and hid where I could kind of see him in between, like, a stone and a tree. Um, got a picture of him as he came by, so I was able to add, you know, the extra damage bonus and whatnot you get uh, out of that uh, first pass by. I let him go, bit, like, bang on the... Uh, on the the um the piping exit where the little sisters come out get his little sister and then uh and i did this over a couple times because i screwed this up more than once and got killed but you know the the as the the version of the story as if i'd played it straight through you know once um, without making a mistake is you know they they once he gets her he comes back down and they go and, like, get parts off of the splicer that I had killed earlier. So knowing that that's where they were going to go, I dropped a proximity mine, like, right there. Went and hid in my little corner. Uh, for some reason, it's weird, but, like, when he gets hit by a proximity mine, if, even if you're in hiding, he then, at that point, like, snaps and behaves as if he knows where you are. Um, but at any rate, uh, you know, I heard the proximity mine go off, you know, came running out with, um, with my uh, grenade launcher, um, hit him twice with two heat-seeking or homing, you know, grenades, um, and then did some more damage on him with some more grenades, and eventually he fell, and I was able to get the little sister, so, uh, but that was neat just because, you know, that, um, I, I find that that game, in kind of its older design, doesn't use kind of the verticality of the level, like I had talked about with Tiny Tina, um, so it's all pretty kind of flat and one-dimensional in terms of enemy response, but... You know, that was a neat little encounter because I was kind of able to use some of the geomet geometry and sections of the map um, instead of just, like, rolling up on him and choosing violence, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and seeing how that all worked out. So, uh, good time. I'm looking forward to uh, to spending some more time uh, in that. You you, uh, you back, Tal? Yeah, I'm back. I'm, I, my videos, though, messed up for some reason, so I'll probably just be... Just my icon right now, unfortunately. So, uh, but yeah, that's uh, you. Had, and then you had another uh, article here on GeForce Now, predicting the future. Yeah, so this is about the GeForce Now leak, and the only reason I pulled it in here was because in this list they saw yet another Bioshock kind of remake. So now people don't know what that is. But you know, this thing leaked, and a ton of what was mentioned of it was a bunch of speculation. Um, you know, and then it died over like a week or two, uh, and now it's back, and everybody's talking about it like it's new again. Um, like I said, the only reason I I mentioned it was because I went looking f to see if there was any more uh, up to date Bioshock news, and uh, in this list is um, is a Bioshock I think RTX remake or something like that. So I just assume that that's going to like. Uh, to GeForce now, and not necessarily, and is not necessarily a uh, a retail release. And if it is, maybe it's a release for the Switch. I'm not sure. But um, you know, th this is this thing of where you know uh, somebody leaked, somebody got a hold of and leaked um, a uh, a kind of uh, product roadmap. I, I mean, I use the term roadmap loosely. It really just listed a bunch of 
uh, not yet announced games in it as things that they were eventually, you know, planning on accommodating, you know, with their driver stack. And I'm not going to mention all of the games that were on there, but but some of the games that were on there um, have come to fruition. You know, they've been announced. You know, uh, Kingdom Hearts was one of those. Um, Kingdom Hearts, I think, 4, I think, is the iteration that's coming out. Um, and so now people have greater confidence that the games on the list are games that are eventually going to come out. So, uh, like I said, you know, the Bioshock, I th- what I think is a Bioshock remake, which, again, you know, it's a remake on top of a remake, because they've already re- remade it once, so I'm not really sure what that's all about, but, uh, but that was one of the one of the game names in the list in addition to all the other juicy and interesting stuff that's on that list, which we're not going to read here because we're running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought they... Didn't they announce, uh, or 2K did, that they're going they're working on some kind of Bioshock thing not too long ago, like a few months ago or something? I thought. I mean, it wasn't in this article, but I'm just, I don't, I don't know. Side. So, so those guys, uh, I'm not sure exactly where they are, but uh, there's a, I think it's happening at 2K that they're working on a System Shock three. Um, okay. But I didn't, I didn't think War Inspector was at, at 2K anywhere in 2K, but. You know his name is mentioned as having is as being involved. Um, so I'm not sure if he's a consultant uh, or what, but um, but but I think that's that's in the mix. And of course, Bioshock is a spiritual successor to, to System Shock Two, so um, I yeah. wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if you know there was some connective tissue there. Um, but but no, I I haven't heard of a of a Bioshock thing in pipeline other than than this thing that's on this rumor mill list. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe that was what I was. My I, had, I was thinking about then. I know there's some kind of shock. <laughs> Something was shocking it. All right. So, uh, nothing for uh, anything else uh, as far as we've played. Uh, you do have something that you're going to be playing up next here on your uh, your playlist. Yeah, just up next, I'm planning on uh, diving into Age of Wonders 3, which I think I have. I mean, I think I played a little bit of. Um, I can't remember if I skipped three and went straight to four. Um, there's a sci-fi one that I, th- I think that maybe that one's for. I'm not sure, but um, so I'll see if I have this. If I don't have this, I'm probably not going to go out of my way to go back and buy it. But but for right now, it's on my list, um, and uh, which will be a, a little chill, a little uh, turn base, you know, opportunity to relax and not be so white knuckled as you know playing, you know, Destiny two and and. Uh, I guess I guess that's what I, all I've been playing is shooters between Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, Destiny Two, yeah. and uh, and Bioshock. So, w- w- was there any particular reason this came back or this came up, or is just something you saw and you're like, oh, I want to play this? Uh, no, this came up because um, I, periodically I have a assignment that I give myself to go back and revisit like a certain year in gaming um, in the 21st century, and uh, I think this is I think I want I think this is 2014. I want to say, I want to say, so Fallout, yeah. Fallout Four, Fallout Four, I did because uh, I had a, I had a similar assignment, but the but the year that I was doing was 2007, but I but for this one, I think it's the same type of assignment, but it was 2014, and Age of Wonders Three was uh, was one of the critically acclaimed titles that year, so it's uh, it's one that I wanted to kind of go back and revisit. Nice. All right. So that shall do it for tonight. Let's uh, jump into our what we'll do for our picks place here with the formal announcement of Cloud Gaming Division under Xbox Game Studios Publishing, headed by Kim Swift, lead designer of Port- one of the lead designers of Portal. I don't know if she was the only lead designer. Play a game on some type of online streaming service, whether it's xCloud, Stadia, Amazon Luna, or whatever other service you may be a part of. Play any game of any genre and let us know how the experience was. But I would like to add, if you can play a game with multiplayer, either co-op or competitive, that will be extra points for you from me. So take that as, as you will. Uh, so I will continue to play uh, Outriders and probably a bunch of others, but I'm just going to I'm going to narrow it down to uh, Outriders on xCloud. Uh, DBQ is going to play Cyberpunk 2077, most likely, I believe you said, a couple weeks ago on Stadia. And then I don't know if you had anything, uh, Game Logic, that you had an eye on. Uh, not anything on the slate. Uh, this is very likely to be a discussion of my story of disenrolling from all my cloud services. So, this, <laughs> oh, this, okay. I may be using the, this assignment as the as the impetus to finally make me uh, get off my butt and uh, 
unsubscribe from Google Stadia and uh, and Apple Arcade, which is not technically a cloud service, but is another gaming subscription service that uh, that I have that I just don't really use that much of. Nice. I like how one of us, the, when like I've jumped into a cloud gaming, cloud streaming, and then now you're going like it always seems to happen. Like one of us kind of jumps into something, and then the other uh, other one or two like you know just kind of drop off of it. So it's kind of a funny thing. All right, so that's it for tonight. Uh, another episode in the books. Uh, next week we will have DBQ Hams will be hosting, and I believe the rest of us should be on there, um, most likely as long as nothing comes up uh, in our lives. Thank you, Game Legic, for uh, joining me tonight. It was another great discussion. Lots of games. Uh, not, yeah, there wasn't really... New stories were a little light. I don't want to say light, but uh, there's nothing that kind of jumped out at me. That's why I only had the one uh, this week. So, um, And I noticed you had you had put a bunch of them uh, at the end of the day, there, or I mean, earlier in the day, or I think yesterday. Uh, so I don't know. That just didn't, just kind of seemed like a light, a light week, maybe just because of the holiday or whatever. But uh, we'll see if next week brings us any big stories or anything we can pull out uh, that we see and like game logic thank you once again i am tower master 99 thank you for joining us please come back next week next thursday we will have another exciting show take care of yourselves and we will see you next time